And let's see if I remember which one's which. Um, let's try this one. This is a follow-on to the last video where I showed you how to set up your map for some Lua scripting. I really recommend you open up the following resource that was recommended to me in one of the Half-Life Modding Discord channels while you go through this video and refer to it if my explanations aren't clear. The Lua API isn't really that well documented to begin with, and it took a lot of trial and error to get even this simple example working. Here be dragons, you've been warned. On the flip side, it can be pretty rewarding when you do figure something out. I'll link this page in the description below. Let's get started. This is based on an earlier map I did with buttons. So if you want to know how to make these buttons, you can refer to the link above. I've just modified it a bit to have two different buttons. And one of the buttons is going to teleport the Barney, the combine player, up onto a platform. While the other one is going to teleport the player to a different spot. So we have our combine soldier here. We have our player over here. These are the two entities that are going to be teleported. I also have a position here to teleport the combine soldier to. I want to teleport him to an obvious spot, so I'm going to put him up on those stairs. Let's create a logic script entity, which is going to refer to the script, which is sitting in the vscripts directory. We'll give the logic script entity a name so we can refer to it in triggers. For instance, the button. If you look under the miscellaneous settings, there's an entity scripts field. Add the name of your script there. And if it's in a subdirectory under vscripts, you'll have to add the subdirectory, but just the last bit of the file name. So from vscripts on. In this case, it's just teleporter.lua. The name does not have to match the entity name. I'm just doing that for the sake of simplicity here. The logic that's going to call the script is in the func physical button. So I'm going to open that up go to the outputs and set up an output so that when this button is pressed, it's going to look at the teleporter script, the logic script entity teleporter. It's going to call script function and that script function is going to be one of the functions in that file. I'm going to look at the file in a second, but for now, just believe me that there is a function called teleport player inside that script that I can reference. Now we'll do the same thing with the other button. We'll go to its on pressed output. Then we're gonna set it to the teleporter script again and on call script function. But now the name of the function we're gonna call is gonna be teleport barney. You can have multiple functions in a single script file and then refer to those different functions. So you don't need one function per file. You can have one script with a ton of stuff in it and just refer to it. So you can see here that the entity name is Barney. And I'm going to use that to find him later from the script. I also happen to have an AI relationship here. Don't forget this part. This just makes sure when I launch the map, Barney's not going to start shooting the player. And you can find more information on AI relationships up in the video linked in the corner. There are two other entities that I'm going to refer to from the Lua code. One is this little trigger spot, which just gives me an X, Y, and Z vector that I can transport the Combine Soldier to. And the other is this teleport location, which is a special entity you use to teleport the player. The teleport location is real simple to set up. You can give it a name so you can refer to it from Lua script and just the entity to teleport, which in this case is the player. And that's really it. There's nothing much else to it. The location of it on the map is what we're going to use to actually send the player to that location. So where we want the player to end up, that's where you put this on the map. Now let's jump into the actual Lua code here. I have three functions in this file, teleport player, teleport Barney, and print stats. Print stats is just there to give you a little bit of an idea of how you get information out of entities. And I run that at the start of the map on map spawn using a logic auto. At the top of the code here, I declare two variables, one for the player and one for the target. And the target is going to be Barney later, but I'm going to initialize them to nil, which is basically the same as null if you've seen null in other programming languages. Now, if I pull up the button press, you can see the function call teleport player in the button press that matches function teleport player in the Lua file. 
there's a global object that I reference called entities, and that's just provided for you by the engine. So I can call entities, and then there is a special function call called get local player, which will just return to an object which is a local player. It might seem a bit weird at first if you're used to other programming languages and used to calling methods with a dot. Here you call a method with a colon instead. So it's entities colon get local player, and I'm going to store that in a player variable. Now I also need a handle to the teleport location. So that teleport location entity on the map, you can find entities using their name from the name attribute in the entity itself. So if I look at entities and I call the function find by name with the first parameter being nil, I'll explain that in a second, and the second parameter being the name of the entity. If you have multiple entities with the same name in the map, you can actually cycle through them by putting that first variable, that first parameter, that's nil. If you put the name of the last entity you looked at, it'll give you the next one in the list. But here, I know that there's only one teleport location in the map, so I give it nil as the first argument, and it's just going to return to me a handle of that teleport location, and I'm going to store it in a variable called teleport location. The next method, ent fire by handle, which probably stands for entity fire by handle, not sure why they decided just to abbreviate the first bit. You use ent fire by handle to call inputs on entities in the map. So here I'm going to pass it the object that I want this to fire on, so the player. The object where the input is that I'm firing, which is teleport location and the name of the input I'm going to fire, which is teleport to current position. There's a few inputs you can call on this, but teleport to current position is the one that'll actually take the entity like the player and move it to the position of that point teleport object. Now you don't necessarily need to use Lua to achieve this, but it's a nice example to run through because it's pretty simple code and you can see it run in the map. Next, let's look at the teleport Bonnie script, which is a little bit different and actually looks a little bit more straightforward. So again, I'm going to refer to that entities object and I'm going to look for an entity named Barney, which is this Barney combine soldier in the map right here. Again, I'm going to pass it nil as the first argument because I know there's only one entity in there called Barney. Then I'm going to create a new vector, which actually has the position of the top of that staircase. And I can get that position from that little block entity that I put on top of the staircase. So I know that it's at minus 187, 220, 47. So I'm just going to create a vector, store it in that variable called position. And that's the location I'm going to use, the vector I'm going to use to send the combine soldier to. Now the method you use to move the combine soldier is really straightforward. You take that target, so the handle to the thing you're going to move, you call the set origin method on it, and you pass it the vector position. The strange thing is if you try this on the player, it doesn't work, but it works on other entities. So you might be tempted to try to use player set origin with position, and for whatever reason, that doesn't seem to function properly. So here we are in the map. I've got the two buttons. One of the buttons is going to hopefully transport that combine soldier to that position over there, and the other one should transport the player to a spot over there. So let's see what happens. And let's see if I remember which one's which. Um, let's try this one. There we go. So hopefully I was looking up in time, but the combine soldier teleported right over there. Now, Let's see what happens if I press this one. There we go. I teleported from there over to here. We can try that again. Now you can use the same logic with buttons. You could use it with any sort of item, touching the item, going through a trigger to teleport the player to a different location in the map. So think of creative ways you can use this. There's all kinds of things you can do in your gameplay mechanics to teleport players and just see if you can build that into your story somehow.
So I really hope you found that helpful. If you did, consider subscribing. I'm going to continue making more complex videos on Lua and see what else I can get these guys to do using Lua scripts. Hey, look over here. Um, like maybe get him to watch me while I do this. So thank you for watching and good luck with your mods.